Jeremiah chapter 9. And we're still at the temple. He's still at the gate of the temple preaching. Been a couple chapters now. Oh, that my head were watered, and my eyes a fountain of tears. Jeremiah is called the weeping prophet. That I might weep day and night for the slain, for the daughter of my people. I mean, the events that God tells Jeremiah. What's going to happen to the people? And the conduct of the people. And not repenting. And the pending judgment that will happen. It causes Jeremiah to weep. And when you're involved in any public ministry, and when your heart yearns for the people, it hurts. Because you know where they're going. And they don't care. Oh, that I had in the wilderness a lodging place for the wayfaring man. That I might leave my people Jeremiah wants to leave. Jeremiah wants to take off. Jeremiah is going to quit one day. The word of God and the action of the people of Jeremiah is like, I want to skip town. I might leave my people and go from them. For they be all adulterers. Assembly of treacherous men. And they have bent their tongues like their bow, bow, uh, bow for lies. Military. The bow. As you would bend the bow for armament, so their tongues are bent for use of lies. But they are not valiant for the truth upon the earth. That's America today. That's the world today. And that's the churches today. And that's the Christian today. And they'll glue their ears and their eyes to the television. They know it's lies. They'll get themselves modern Bibles. They'll heat to them preachers with itchy ears. Worldly carnal churches. And in the time of the truth, they took the truth and nailed it to his cross. Paul ventured out and started churches as a missionary and, and the churches have I become your enemy because I speak the truth. I know that feeling. For they proceed from evil to evil and they know not me saith the Lord. They don't know who God is. And yet there's a temple. There's a, Jeremiah, go to the temple. Go to the gate of the temple. They're going to religious. They're doing the acts. They're doing the temple. And they don't even know who God is. And there are people who go to church on Sunday morning. And they don't even know who God is. And they come out from the church service at the end of Sunday morning. And they still don't know who God is. It's a shame. He's been a contraction and a concoction of lies. Take ye heed everyone his neighbor. Trust not in any brother. For every brother will utterly supplant. That was Jacob's name. Jacob meant supplanter. And every neighbor will walk with slanders. You are in a time of Jeremiah that God says, don't trust your neighbor. He'll lie. If the price is right, he'll sell himself out. There's come in a time when the Antichrist comes with the mark of the 666. 
People will sell you out if you don't have that mark. They will deceive everyone. His neighbor knows the word deceive that's going to show up. And will not speak the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies. Educated the tongue. There are people who go to universities and colleges and learn how to lie. And the media does that. And the media has always done that. The media has reported lies and stories they don't even know yet. When the Titanic sunk, the media reported in the newspapers all the people on the Titanic were rescued. And it wasn't sad that the next morning, when the morning newspapers came out, the numbers started coming in. Why didn't you shut the newspapers up? Why didn't you put them down? Why don't you say you bunch of liars? Even President Donald Trump during his term has called them fake news. They're liars. They've been liars since the Civil War. They've been liars. That's their business. Because they want to sell advertisements. And they're sure not going to print the truth. Because people don't want the truth. They don't want to buy the truth. And weary themselves to commit iniquity. There are bah, colleges. There are Bible... <clears throat> uh, Bible... <clears throat> Colleges and seminaries. And all they do is teach lies. And iniquity. Students go in King James and they come out perverted. Young men go into these seminaries and these colleges on fire for the Lord. And these colleges and seminaries throw water on them. And they come out as tools of the world and tools of the devil. And it's amazing how many Bible colleges, how many Bible seminaries we got. Where's all the churches? Where's all the King James Bible believing churches? I know one church right now, they they, they have their they have their their, their 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 Bible school. And when, when the people come to their school and they learn the Bible and all that, and then they stay there and they don't go anywhere and they don't do nothing. They go under the pastor's wing. I heard a man there one time. He told me out of his own mouth, I want a church be handed to me that's already built and ready to go. I, I can't. I, I, I can't go do that church because the job I have right now, I'm making good money where I'm at. Okay. Thy habitation is in the midst of deceit. There's that word again. They deceive everyone his neighbor and they live in deceit. And that could be your church house. That could be any denomination. You could have a worldly pastor, preacher, Sunday school teacher, or you could have the devil himself minister. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Because the devil is the father of lies. God cannot, will not ever lie. So when you got a man out of a podium of a church and out of a, out of a, a, a the pulpit of a church and he tells a lie a lie that ain't of God no way is that an attitude of God where did it come from and will not speak the truth that's Satan They have taught their tongue to speak lies, weary themselves to commit iniquity. Their whole realm is sin. Thy habitation is in the midst of deceit. 
through deceit, they refuse to know me, saith the Lord. So they don't want to know God because they are happy with deceiving. And there are, again, in the churches, there are people who are not going to know God because they want to be deceived. They want, if I give God a dollar, he's going to give me 10000 And if I go to church, that's what, that's what my salvation is going to be. We've got the world's greatest, world's greatest church. <laughs> we got the greatest, best pastor. We're rich, we're wonderful, we're great, and they don't know the truth of Revelation chapter 3. You're poor, miserable, naked, wretched, and I'm standing outside the door knocking. You're Ichabod. And there are some Christians, what do you, is that Greek? Deceit, because they don't know the Lord because of deceit. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts. Behold, I will. What's the will of God? There's an I will of God. There's a will of God right there. I will melt them. And tr try them. For how shall I do for the daughter of my people? I'm going to find out who's true and who's not. Their tongue is an arrow shot out. Said their tongue was like a bow. Verse 3. Their tongue is like into a bow and arrow. And bow and arrow is the sport. And for destruction. It speak is deceit. Is that word again? You know, the Bible says that we're going to get a new name in glory. And if we were to get a new name on the character that we were on this earth as Christians, deceit, deceitful. I wonder if there would be names like that given to Christians in glory. You see, in the churches today, and that's what I'm looking at with Jeremiah, I'm bringing it to up to date. What are some of the deceits of the churches today? Run to Malachi and give your money to the church. And then you, then you turn around and tell your, your congregation you're not under the law. But you run to a book that's in the law. You run to Matthew for doctrines, and Matthew has nothing to do with the church age. Now, you can spiritually apply. You can rightly divide, but Matthew's written to the Jews. That you have the house of God. And how many other Baptist churches are in your state? your county, and you are the one of the house of God? You got modern Bible? You got any Bible but the King James Bible? That's deceit. You got no Bible? That's deceit. You got a, a, a pastor, preacher, educator that gets up before the church and he's number one that's the seat say this prayer and that's the seat all eyes closed i see that hand and there's no hand the seat therefore thus saith the lord of hosts Lord, i will melt them and try them for how shall I do for the daughter of my people? Their tongue is as an arrow shot out. It speaketh deceit. One speaketh peacefully unto his neighbor with the mouth. But his heart lieth in wait. Out of the mouth comes peace. 
But out of the heart comes damage, destruction, war. He's a hypocrite. He's a hypocrite. That's what a lot of these peace treaties are. This is what the Pope is. This is what the United Nations are. They say, they say something, and what they do is something totally different. Yet politicians are like that. They'll say anything to get in office. Then once they get into office, they do totally different. Shall I not visit them for these things? What the thing? What thing? For the deceit. You're not going to get, get away with deceit. There's a visitation. And the visitation upon the children of Judah is Jerusalem will be inflamed. The walls will be destroyed and the temple will be taken down. And all the idols will be taken to Babylon except the ark. I mean, come on. It will be mentioned that the, uh, Boaz and I forget the other name of the, of the, of the column. And God didn't mention the ark. Shall I not visit them for these things? Saith the Lord, shall not my soul, God's soul, be avenged on such a nation as the God's people, Israel, Judah? And listen, if God is going to get his people. If he's going to challenge and judge his people and know that the judgment must begin at the house of God, relax that Germany, England, China, Russia, Africa, Asia, Americas, Canada will be judged by God also. If God will judge his people, he'll judge the people of Satan. For the mountains will I take up weeping in wailing. For the habitation of the wilderness, in fact, verse 1 and 2, which is Jeremiah and his God. God is weeping for what the children of Israel and their condition are in Judah. That what he has to do. The wilderness lamentations because they have burned up so that none can pass through them. Midican men hear the voice of the cattle. Both the fowl of the heavens and the beasts are fled. They are gone. I will, God, I will make Jerusalem heat. A den of dragons. That'd be reptilians, lizards. I will make the cities of Ju Judah desolate, and he will. Rest assured, when God says, I will, he will. Without inhabitant. Babylon's going to thoroughly clean out Judah. Who is the wise man that may understand this? Jeremiah, to a point. Those that study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not be shamed rightly by the word of truth. Sure not the deceivers. And who is he to whom the mouth of the Lord has spoken? Jeremiah, Isaiah, Habakkuk, that he may declare it. For what the land perish is gone and is burned up by the wilderness. That none passes through. And the Lord saith, Because they have forsaken my law, Jewish, Judah, which I set before them, and have not obeyed my voice, and neither walked therein, but have walked in imagination of their own heart, religion, their own doings, gods, imagery, idolatry. After Balaam, multiple gods, which their fathers taught them, 
fathers taught them the wrong thing. So the fathers are going to be held responsible. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will feed them, even this people, Israel, with wormwood. That's a tribulation. That star that comes down, wormwood, and give them water of gall to drink. That's what they gave Jesus. Also going to get when Babylon comes. I will scatter them among the heathen. They're going to go to Babylon. Daniel's going to Babylon. Ezekiel's going to Babylon. Whom they, who neither they nor their fathers have known. I will send a sword, war, after them. Do I have consumed them? Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider ye, call for the mourning women, that they may come. These were women that were paid the week. They may come and send for the cunning women, skilled, that they may come. And let them make haste, hurry up, and take up a wailing for them, that's their job, that our eyes may run down with tears. And our eyelids gush out with water. It'll be a time of sorrow. It's going to be a time of weeping. For the voice of wailing is heard in Zion. Lamentations. How are we spoiled? We are greatly confounded. Because we have forsaken the land. They have not done the Sabbath. They're gone away into captivity. Because our dwellings have cast us out. They're going out of the land. Yet hear the word of the Lord, O ye women. Let your ear receive the word of his mouth. And teach your daughter wailing. And everyone his neighbor lamentations. Teach sorrow. Teach tears. Teach crying. It ain't going to get better. For death has come up into our window. And has entered into our palaces. Kingly homes. Richly homes. Just like the night when the death angel went through Egypt. To cut off the children from without. And the young man from the street. There'll be death everywhere. Speak, thus saith the Lord. Even the carcasses of men shall fall as dung upon the open field. As a hand, a handful after the harvestmen. None shall gather. None's going to bury them. They're not going to bury them. And a burial is important for the Jews. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. And you scholars, knock it off. Because you had so much wisdom, you didn't see the judgment of God coming. You didn't even know who God was. You wouldn't listen to Jeremiah. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might, because the armies of Judah are going to be defeated by the armies of Babylon. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. He's not going to have his riches no more. The wise man don't know. The mighty man loses his might. And the rich man is going to lose his riches. Almost pictures a man in hell. You're so wise. What are you doing in hell? You're so mighty. All right. Fight the forces of hell. You can. And the rich man in hell, he, had, he didn't have his riches. They were gone. But let him that glory, or you want to glory? Glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, God. If you know God, and you understand God, and God knows you, 
glory in that the disciples came back oh the devils are subject to it oh look at all the healing we did jesus said glory not over that but glory that your name is known in heaven i am i am the lord that's in a particular expression that exercise loving kindness judgment see the liberal don't like the judgment the liberal will have loving kindness in their race judgment and righteousness righteousness has loving kindness and righteousness has judgment in the earth for all these things i delight saith the lord god delights in loving kindness god delights in judgment and the god delights in righteousness behold the days come saith the lord i will punish all them which are circumcised Jews with the uncircumcised Gentiles and Jews who have not obeyed the covenant of Abraham. When Joshua came out, came into the land, he had to circumcise them because they had not been circumcised in the wilderness. Egypt, Judah, Edom, children of Ammon, and Moab. Egypt, that we know Egypt, Judah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Edom, that's the brother to Jacob, Ammon, and Moab, that's the children of Lot, well, uh, Abram's uh, nephew, I think it was, all that are in the uttermost corners that dwell in the wilderness for all these nations are uncircumcised. Notice Judah. Judah had the covenant of circumcision. Not of the heart, and all the house of Israel are uncircumcised in heart. Though they had that operation in the heart, they were not circumcised. And with the heart, man believes under righteousness.